The stock market sold off about 1% today because of an inverted yield curve. What's an inverted yield curve? You may recall back in January, I started talking about the yield curve because as interest rates were moving higher, people were fearful of interest rates moving too high. So I started showing charts on the yield curve to show you that all this, uh, what the Federal Reserve is doing is near, merely getting the yield curve to normal before they start looking at inflation. We're well below normal. So the fact that we're talking about an inverted yield curve, it's a little early, if you will. Nonetheless, if you look at some of the charts I've got, there's some scary things there. People are very concerned about this. But 1% sell-off in the market isn't exactly a huge deal. Nonetheless, the sell-off we saw in January, based on interest rates moving higher, was a pretty big move to the downside. So let's take a look at the inverted yield curve. Let's get a good idea of what it is, what it could be showing us, and how important this is to your investments. Okay, what is this chart? This is Google Trends. And there are two charts here, or two lines here, if you will, blue and red. Blue is something I look at on a regular basis. Um, this one tells me how interested people are on a regular basis on trading economics. And that's the search string. And trading economics is basically um, if the unemployment report comes out, how interested are people involved in that to see are they searching things like this for content and stuff like that? The red line, inverted yield curve. And as you can see, there was a lot of interest today. A lot. Um, this is now what is considered 100. And everything else is a percentage of that. So this will be here for a while. Here's the thing. It could go higher tomorrow. Uh, you could get more searches. I'm not sure. Nonetheless, this was big. I was stunned that this much interest in the inverted yield curve actually existed. Let's take a look at the <clears throat> damage that was done to the stock market. Here we see uh, this is the S&P 500 and it goes back to um, basically about a year. 1% is not really that big of a move. And as you can see, we were sitting uh, just above like 41.25 and over the past say 10 days, moved up to about 46.35 was the high, I think, in the most recent uh, move. And we've been kind of going sideways. Now, this is all this damage that we've seen was really based upon um, the war in Ukraine versus Russia. There's a lot going on there, especially with uh, Russian oil and things like this. So obviously, that's, that's going to affect the markets. But the noise is dying down. Ukraine looks like they're kicking butt. Uh, good for them. I'm all for that. Nonetheless, this 1% move, all that search was driven because of this 1% move downward. Now let's take a look at some other charts. The treasury yield curve. What is a yield curve? Before I define what is in an inverted yield curve, let's understand what the yield curve is. Real simple. You have annual interest rates for certain products. One year, 10 year, five year, 30 year, whatever, 100 year. These bars represent, you can see one month, two month, three months, six months, one year, two year, all the way out to 30 year. Then of course, all the way on the left-hand side, we start at zero. All right, that's your basis. Um, basically, someone borrows five bucks for you for, or 10 or 20 bucks for you for lunch today, pays you back immediately after lunch. Zero percent interest. Tomorrow, however, they're going to have to pay interest. Nonetheless, these bars represent all the different interest rates for the different maturities. Um, now, one month, that is one month uh, alone for one month, but it, it the interest rate is annualized. So the interest rate may be, say, 4%. But you're only paying 4%. You're not paying 4% over the course of one month. You're paying a percentage of that 4% in that one month period of time. So that's how interest rates work. Nonetheless, this is what the bars look like for each one. And what we do next is we turn that into a line. 
I think it was back in the 1970s, they started realizing that you could turn that into the line. And because of that, it gave us some information. This is the last, if you look at the bottom here, uh, June 23rd, 2006. This is the last normalized yield curve we've had since 2006. We were getting close in, say, 2018, 2019, but not nearly as high as this. Um, and then, of course, that economy, <clears throat> had it moved forward appropriately, it could have eclipsed this. But some yield curves would go up at close to, say, 6%, 7%. But nonetheless, this is where we are here. Okay. Back in January, when I talked about the yield curve, the devil that the yield curve is, there's three uh, bars here. The gray, I just showed you that. That was June 2006. The red is from the lowest point during the pandemic. And that came April 24th, 2020. All right. Interest rates across the board were rock bottom. The 30 year, look at it. Uh, 1.25. It was crazy. At the time in uh, January, the black line, you can see that it was inflating. But this is the period when all through January, the stock market was selling off. The, the yield curve isn't even close to normal. So for us to be a little skittish about the fact that the interest rates are moving higher at this time, it's a little early. We've seen this before. After the 2006, uh, June 23rd, 2006, that we see here, of course, we had the 2008 financial crisis going into 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on. But there's this thing called the taper tantrum. When the Federal Reserve started saying, yeah, we're going to stop buying bonds. We're going to lower our portfolio. We're going to do this, 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 and this. You know, all the game pieces that they play with, they're going to start changing things up a little bit normalizing the economy, trying to remove that excessive accommodation. The stock market kind of freaked out a little bit. They call it the taper tantrum. We probably saw that again just in January, the sell-off. We're not even close to normal with interest rates, let alone to a point where the Federal Reserve is pushing interest rates to a point where they're trying to slow things down. Granted, there's other outlying issues going on right now. The supply train chain is an absolute mess. So there's inflation, inflated prices there. Chasing scarce resources, things like this. Now, you need to start to kind of ask questions. What's going to happen in the future? Okay, three more charts. Uh, two of these you've just seen. Um, the gray chart, of course, was 2006. The black chart, this is where we are today versus where we were in this previous chart back in January. This, of course, is the first part of April. So there's some, it's inflate, the yield curve is inflated a little more. But I want you to take a look at this um, red bar. That is, if you look at the date, August 29th, 2006. And that is an inverted yield curve. Okay, what is an inverted yield curve? So you have the front months, the early, the one month, two month, three month, and the overnight rate uh, the Federal Reserve has. Those interest rates usually are lower than the longer end. Because in the shorter end, we have an idea of what's going to happen we feel pretty comfortable with the status quo of the economy, geopolitics, things like this. And so therefore, what we don't know is five years, 10 years, 30 years out, anything can happen. Because of that, there's more risk with more time. So theoretically, you would have a higher interest rate based on that. But when we get an inverted yield curve, what happens is the long end, the 10 year, the 20 year, the 30 year, interest rates start falling. But the short end, they don't. 
This is what's called inverted yield curve. Now, there's a quote by a gentleman by the name of Samuelson, and I think he was talking to the, um, actually, Congress. And Mr. Samuelson said, um, the stock market has predicted nine of the last five recessions. Okay, think about that. Nine out of the last five recessions. Basically, what he said was rather tongue in cheek, and economists around the world, we kind of latched up onto it because it really summarizes some things. The stock market has moved, thinking, oh, the, stock, uh, the economy is going to go into recession. So the stock market sold off. Well, it sold off nine times, but in that period, only five recessions actually happened that the stock market got it wrong nine out of five times. Actually, four out of five times they were wrong. So in this case, when we look at this inverted yield curve, you see this lower dip here right in the center. That's the inversion. To me, first, in a classical sense, mind you, I'm a macro economist. Sorry. Um, this is where my foundation of my learning was all the way back to university i've applied this i've worked this professionally as an economist throughout you know my career i'm applying this now as an investor so we use classical examples but sometimes a lot of times those classical examples certainly just don't play out and in this case the current year yield curve isn't even close to a normalized classic example. You can see that plain as day. It's the black line versus the gray line. This might be the ultimate reason why. Here is oil. And this is one of the things that I wanted to really kind of point out. What's going to go on with oil? Think about this from one year out. And ask yourself, is the inverted yield curve necessarily correct that it's signaling a recession happening or is it something else we're transitioning number one the United States of America even though it's embargoing all of Russia as much as they possibly can we're shutting them down we're just basically saying you're not gonna be part of the world basically fine great but they did supply a lot of oil to the world so what does that mean actually they supplied about eight or nine percent of the world's output they'll use some of their own China obviously will use some of that India Pakistan so that oil doesn't exactly disappear. It just finds new customers in different and creative ways. And they're all going to have to cheat mad crazy to get that oil. So that oil is going to be paid for very inexpensively because of the amount of cheating that's going to have to go on. <clears throat> Given that, what is the United States of America going to do? We are ramping up production, period, across the board to the tune of about a million barrel or two million barrels a day are expected to be showing up by the end of this year. Two million extra barrels per day of production here in the United States of America. Way more than we need. At the same time, President Biden is going to start dumping the market starting May 1st, I think it was the date, uh, for 180 days, an extra million barrels out of the... Um, reserves we've got what's going to happen with all that supply price is going to plummet now even though we're looking at sky high prices comparatively a year from now all these prices fall significantly so where's the inflation that's the thing how do we measure inflation we look at prices at a certain point starting point and we call it 100 and constantly, when the government looks at this, they look at that 100 point and they keep moving it closer and closer and uh, updating it every two, three, four years, whatever it is. All right. One year from that 100, you get your inflation rate. So if it moves, which we're at inflation about seven and a half percent, all the way up to 107.5, you have seven and a half percent interest or inflation. Okay, what happens the year after that? What if there is no inflation? So whereas you had 7.5% in one year, 
If the following year it's at 107.5, the price index, there is zero inflation there. That translates into a 3.75% annualized interest rate over the course of two years. With all that oil we're about to be getting out of the market, it's very possible that what we do see is lower inflation two, three years from now. And now all of a sudden you start thinking about the long end of the yield curve and you say an inverted yield curve, basically the Federal Reserve probably won't have to push up long-term interest rates. The Fed doesn't actually push up long-term interest rates. Uh, the market does as much as we think needs to happen. Because of that, that little pseudo bump that we had, that's where that inverted yield curve is playing in. I see this more as long term down the road, we're not going to see as high as int uh, inflation and interest rates. And that's why we're seeing a little divot in the uh, uh, yield curve, which is giving us the inverted yield curve. One more chart I want to show you, natural gas. This is a CFD. And I don't know exactly where this one comes from, uh, meaning how many different worldwide, what the pricing is, but this is what natural gas looks like. Natural gas is a different story altogether, simply because Russia was supplying Germany and Western, Eastern Europe, Western Europe uh, with a lot of natural gas. This one may hurt. And the United States of America has plenty of natural gas, do we necessarily have the ability to send it to Europe on a consistent basis where it is possible to flood that market? That remains to be seen, and honestly, I don't know that particular uh, data point. Nonetheless, this is the one that is really more concerning to me than it is oil. Oil, I think, is going to just sink like the Titanic. There's going to be so much production going on. There's going to be so much supply going on that the Western uh, countries are going to sit there maybe one year from now and say, oh, well, that was back then. We're fine now. Nonetheless, I wanted to get this information out there because we may see a couple more days where the term inverted yield curve shows up more and more in our news and people start searching it more and more. And it might push people out of their stocks regardless of what stocks you trade, what industry, none of those industries live in a bubble. Well, maybe cannabis. Cannabis seems to live in an entirely different bubble where it doesn't matter how good the numbers are, the stocks go down. Uh, but that's changing. Cannabis stocks are starting to trend up. I'm thinking this will probably blow over simply because maybe cooler heads are going to prevail or maybe this is yet another nine out of five recessions being indicated by the stock market. Nonetheless, I just wanted to get this information out there so you guys can get a good idea what is an inverted yield curve, how that will affect the stock market, and what you can do with that information. I'll take a real kind of wait and see, but really, I don't even think this is a speed bump. I think this is probably positive news that the long end of the yield curve is dipping. We'll see you in the next video.